Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see each and every one with us this morning. We have many visitors. We're very glad that you've come our way. We're very glad that you've had safe travels to be with us uh, on the Lord's Day this morning. We're certainly thankful for so many people involved in our services. We're so thankful for the events that we have uh, coming up. Uh, please don't forget about the uh, gospel meeting with Brother Sam Bartrug. I got to see him this summer and I got to talk to him. He's very excited to come here uh, this fall for our gospel meeting. We're looking forward to that. And uh, once again, I'll echo the idea of uh, the card group after morning services. Sometimes it's easy for those things to slip our mind, but those assignments will be out in the side room. If you'd like to uh, participate, certainly uh, do that. This morning, we're going to be talking about the last call. You know, you think about the idea as you come to the conclusion of Revelation is really we have this idea of the Bible kind of wrapping up, if you will. And as we have the letter concluding, I think that in those verses, as the, as the book is wrapping up, the book of Revelation, in chapter 22, verses 16 and 17, we see this idea, I believe, of a last call. And this call, I believe, is coming from Jesus. I believe this call is coming from the Holy Spirit. And I believe this call should be going out from Christians as well. You know, there's a significance in the last call. I haven't flown for a long time, but I do have uh, one memory of my parents. We had a connecting flight, and uh, there was a little bit of delay, as airports tend to have, and my parents were looking at each other kind of panicked. <laughs> and I did not know exactly what was going on, but our flight was delayed to such a degree that our connecting flight was going to basically be leaving about the time that this flight was arriving. And my parents are looking back and forth, very panicked, and uh, they said, as soon as we get off this plane, we might be running. <laughs> and uh, we did. And I remember running through because we knew that there was going to be a last call for that flight. We knew approximately what time that flight was supposed to leave. And we knew that there would be a last call. Last call, last boarding call for flight, whatever the number was. You know, a last call is significant. We understand that there are no more opportunities really after that last call. Is That call must be answered. And that's really what we have in Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17. We have a last call. A call that needs to be answered by, Christ, uh, by non-Christians, but also by Christians who have walked away from the faith. The call goes out to those people that have not accepted the gospel call, obeying God, and also those individuals that have walked away from the faith. You certainly don't want to miss the last call. And I believe that's what we have before us in Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17. Do we forget that we will not be here forever? Do we forget that at some point we get to the end of the road of this life? In the last call, perhaps it's hard for us to process, but, but the last call has already been given. The last call has been given by Jesus Christ to answer the call. The last call has been given by the Holy Spirit. And you have the opportunity throughout this life to answer that call. But I would suggest that you do not need to linger and you do not want to wait long. You need to be in a right relationship with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, it says, Now is the day of salvation. Let's think about this call for a few moments and think about the call and who this call is coming out from. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17, I think first we see the idea that Jesus has sent out a call. A call to obey the gospel. And you know, a lot of times that word is thrown out in religion, but I only know one way to be called when it comes to Christianity, and that is being called by the gospel. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, To which he called you by our gospel. The gospel is the call. The idea of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that opportunity for us to have a right relationship with God, having our sins forgiven, that call has went out. Jesus has done everything on his side of things to be, give us the opportunity to have a right relationship with the Lord. Have you answered that last call? The last call issued by Jesus. You understand that there is no other call coming. There is no other call coming. There is no other Savior coming. The last call has been given. The question is, is will we answer that call? There is no other call. 
In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me or except by me. There is no other call. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other call. There is no other Savior. And you know what the Lord says? The Lord says, Come. Come all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There is a call coming out from Jesus Christ, and it is the last call. There is no other call coming. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, it appears that people were trying to do things with the gospel call. They were trying to pervert it. They were trying to change it. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, the Bible says, Brethren, I marvel... Well, what's he marveling about? That you are turning so soon away from him who called you in the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. For even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached, let them be accursed. There is no other call. The call of Jesus Christ rings out and it goes out through all the world and it is a call that will not be repeated. In terms of, there is no other call after it. The call of Jesus Christ is going to stay the same. You are going to have to answer that call and that call alone. Certainly that call can be repeated. Certainly we try to repeat it as preachers and as Christians. We're all trying to repeat the same thing, the same gospel call. But there is no other call coming. There is no other call that comes in relation to a solution for sin. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9, it says sin is a transgression of the law. Do you understand that when we sin, we are not in a relationship with God that if our life comes to an end, that we will be with Him eternally in paradise. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, sin is a transgression of the law. It separates us from God. We have violated God's law if we were to stand in God's court. With sin on our record, the judge must say guilty, and the judge will administer the punishment. We understand that this puts man in a hard place, because Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have violated God's law. That puts us in danger of the judgment. That puts us in danger of the punishment for sinning or breaking God's law. And we see what the punishment is in the Bible. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you answered the call of Jesus? Have you answered the gospel call? There is no other call. There is no other call that is coming. And certainly we need that call desperately. Certainly, I think that sin is, is rampant in our world, and it's rampant in our world because of choice. In Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20, it says, The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The, righteous, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. See, in this life, when we sin, we really separate ourselves from God. We put ourselves in the line of fire of the death penalty, the eternal penalty of separation from God. Yet God has given an opportunity. And that call has went out. It has went out into all the world to have peace with God. No longer be in a situation where you are in this situation where you have broken the law and you have not went to fix that problem. And there's only one way to fix that problem. You have to deal with the penalty of sin, and the penalty of sin is death. And fortunately, Jesus came so that we could have peace with God. He came so that we could stand justified, not because of the greatness of ourselves, but because Jesus said, I will pay your fine for you. I know you violated the law and the penalty is death. I will die for you so that you can have peace with God. You can be justified. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, we get a little picture of that. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the last call of Jesus is saying, why don't you have peace with God? Why don't you have peace with the creator of the universe? Don't stand before God at the end of your life 
in violation of sin with the penalty of death and not have that taken care of. Jesus' call is about bringing peace with God. Have you answered the call? Have you answered the call so that you can be justified, that you can stand in peace with God? Well, how can I do that? Well, certainly I think the Bible uh, illustrates this and we can see it as the New Testament unfolds in the book of Acts. We see individuals that are non-Christians and we see them become Christians and we can see the process that they go through. Hearing the word, believing it, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. We see that pattern throughout the book of Acts. It starts in Acts chapter 2 and flows throughout the book. Have peace with God. That's part of the last call of Jesus. Have peace with God. I'm trying to bring peace between you and the creator of the world. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 it says, From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to, who, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. How can I be right with God? You need your sin problem taken care of and those sins can be washed away but it took the blood of Jesus Christ. It took someone else dying on your behalf paying your fine so that you could stand justified before God. There's nothing necessarily special about the water we're not trying to take the water and say that it's special. We're not trying to take it in a cup and take it home with us. But we do know this, is that God, throughout the book of Acts, told individuals when they were becoming Christians to be baptized, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, for the remission of their sins. When Paul recounts his conversion, when Paul recounts his conversion, in that conversation he was having with the person that, was, that he was engaged with, in Acts chapter 22 and uh, verse 16, the individual said, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Calling on the name of the Lord. Wait, baptisms for the remission of sins, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Baptism to wash away our sins, Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. Certainly, there is a process that we see in the New Testament. The call goes out to all. The question is, is will we obey the call? Will we accept what Jesus has said and ask for us to do, or will we run away? You do not want to run away from the call of Jesus to have peace with God. Because with God, you truly, with Jesus, you have life. And without Jesus, you know what you have? You have death. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says this. It says, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And, that, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. See, the call that goes out from Jesus is a call for life. It's a call to live for eternity, to have peace with God. But without God, without Jesus Christ, it is death. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. You know where eternal life is? You know where forgiveness of sins is. You know where all spiritual blessings are. They're in Christ Jesus. And there's only one way that I can see in the Scriptures and for us to be in Christ Jesus. And we see that in Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and following. We see the idea of being baptized into Christ. We see that in Romans chapter 6 as well. Certainly we need to hear the word, we need to believe it, we need to repent, confess, but certainly baptism is part of the plan. You understand that without answering this call, you are without hope. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, it talks about this idea of hope. The idea is that we have no hope if we do not answer the call, and we have hope if we do answer the call. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, the Bible says this. It says that at that time, you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. There is no hope if we do not answer the call which the Bible gives. Now there's a transition in verse 13. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12 it says that if we do not answer the call, we are aliens, we're separated from the promises of God, it says we have no hope. In verse 13 in Ephesians chapter 2, there's a transition. There's a transition from having no hope to having hope. In verse 13, the Bible reads this. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, 
in Christ Jesus. You who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You want to be brought near the blood of Christ, you have to be in Christ. And perhaps other individuals would want something else preached, they would want something else taught, but when I read the scriptures, all spiritual blessings are in Christ. Forgiveness of sins is in Christ. Redemption is in Christ. Answering the call in respect to eternal life, eternal life is in Christ. We must be in Christ. And when we're in Christ, we have a hope of eternal life. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. And hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. If we do what the individuals in the book of Acts did, we will be as they were. Have you answered the call of Jesus? Jesus is calling out to the world for individuals to answer the call. But also in Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17, we see that this call is not coming from Jesus alone. This call is also coming from the Spirit. If you look at verse 17, it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. It's not only Jesus that's saying, Come, but we also have the Holy Spirit that is saying, Come. The Holy Spirit is associated with God's Word. We're talking about the Bible. The Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us about the same call and the same Jesus and it lines up with the things that Jesus said. Will you answer the call of Jesus? Will you answer the call of the Spirit? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. And in and, and various times, God spoke to us in various ways, but He speaks to us through His Son. And certainly, we're thinking about the idea of the inspired Word of God. We have God's inspired Word. Behold, now is an acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. The Bible and Jesus are certainly aligned in trying to get the gospel call out. And what a powerful call it is. Paul talked about how he was not ashamed of the gospel call. And in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God unto salvation. The gospel, the word of God, is powerful. And if you don't think the word of God is powerful, I suggest you just post a few Bible verses on Facebook. You know, throughout my life, I have witnessed individuals that have read the Bible and they've cried. I've witnessed individuals that have read the Bible and they have got angry. The Bible is powerful. The Bible, the Word of God, is powerful to do that which it was designed to do, I believe, to cut the hearts of men and women. That when they hear what the Bible says, they will either say, I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. They're going to have some reaction to it. The Bible is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The Bible is powerful. The question is, is has the call got out? The call goes out from Jesus. The call goes out from the Bible. Has it touched your heart? Now just because the gospel touches your heart doesn't mean that you're going to respond, that we're all going to respond in the same way to the gospel call. We see that in the Bible. In Acts chapter 2, we have individuals on the day of Pentecost, they hear the word of God, and they, they're cut to the heart. Verse, uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, they're cut to the heart. And they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter gives them instructions in the next verse. And unfortunately, many people will not follow the instructions that are in the next verse in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. You know what? The Bible is also preached in Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, we have Stephen who's preaching. Those individuals are cut to the heart as well. But in this case, instead of obeying and doing what is asked of them by God, in Acts chapter 7, verse 54, after Stephen preaches this message, they're cut to the heart, and they say, we're going to stone this guy. We're going to kill this guy. And they do. The Bible is powerful enough to do that which it's designed to do. The gospel call is just as powerful as it was all those years ago. The question is, is that gospel call going out? Certainly, it's going out from Jesus Certainly, it's going out from the Bible. And, and, and when we think about that, God has given us such a powerful tool in respect to the Bible. But God wants you far away from the Bible. God wants the Bible far away from your kids and your grandkids. The devil really wants you far away from services because the devil knows that if you get close to this book, if you hear the words of this book, 
you're going to have some type of reaction. The devil wants our society to be so far away from the Bible because the Bible is powerful enough to do that which it's designed to do. It will cut people's hearts and they will respond in some way, whether in a positive or negative way. What a powerful tool God has given. The gospel call goes out from Jesus. The gospel call goes out from the Bible itself. The question is, is will we listen? You know, earlier in the book of Revelation, in chapter 2 and 3, we have churches, uh, congregations of Christ, and we see some, some advice that is given to each of those congregations. Some of that advice is encouragement. Some of that advice is things that they need to correct. But as you read through that section, chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation, it starts out with a common trend and ends with a common trend. It says, he who has an ear, let him hear. Are your ears open to the gospel call? Are you listening? Or have you closed your ears to what the Bible says? If the Bible asks you to do something or the Bible says that you needed to do something, would you do it? Or would you try to fight with the Bible and say, you know what, I'm not going to do this for X, Y, Z. Would you do what the Bible says? Humbly, simply, just do what the Bible says. You know, the Bible has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it tells us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The gospel call comes out from the Bible. Will you listen? Will you listen what the Bible has to say? He who has an ear, let him hear. The scriptures are making an appeal. Come, come, answer the gospel call. In Luke chapter 14, we have this picture of a feast. The feast has been prepared. All things are ready. All things have been prepared. And we have the series of invitations. But in Luke chapter 14, verse 17, it says, Come, for all things are now ready. All things are now ready for you to answer the gospel call. To answer it just like they did in Acts chapter 2. To answer it just like they did throughout the book of Acts. Are you ready to answer the gospel call. Will you listen to the last call? There are no other calls coming. There are not going to be changes in the instructions. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, it says, Even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. There's nothing else coming. If you want to know how to have a right relationship with God, you want to know how to have peace with God, there's no other place to turn than the holy word of God. You don't have to listen to me. I try to do as 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11 says. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. I'm trying to tell you what the Bible says. But you know what? You have a great blessing. You have your own Bible. You can start in Acts chapter 2. You can start in Acts chapter 1. You can, you can pick up after the Gospels, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you can see how those people of old in the first century responded to the Gospel call. And I suggest that we should respond the same way. And what we see is they're not praying. Oh, yes, they do pray, but they're not praying to be saved. We also see that those individuals don't just believe. When we read the book of Acts, we see exactly what those individuals do, what they're involved in, and we can see the point where they are transitioning from outside the kingdom to inside the kingdom, outside of Christ to inside of Christ. I'm not trying to write anything new. I'm just trying to speak as the words of God. Will you listen to the last call? You know, the Bible has facts to believe. The Bible has commands to be obeyed. And it has promises for you to enjoy. You understand that, don't you? The Bible has facts that you need to believe. It has commands that you need to obey. And it has promises for you to enjoy. The gospel call goes out from Jesus, but it also goes out from the Bible itself. Promises about pardon. Promises about peace. Promises about God's presence in our life. Promises about the privileges of the child of God. What a blessed life it is to answer the last call. The call comes from Jesus. The call comes from the Bible. I would suggest that the call is also supposed to come from Christians themselves. When you look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 16 and 17, I believe we see the idea that Jesus is saying come. 
we see the idea that the Spirit is saying come, but then we also have this. It says, and let him who hears say come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the, uh, take the water of life freely. I think the gospel call is not only supposed to go out from Jesus, which it did, not only supposed to go out from the scriptures, which it does, but it's also supposed to come out from Christians as well. Is the call ringing out from Sandyville? Is the call ringing out from your life? Is the call ringing out? Do people know that that call is available to them? They need to be made aware. When's the last time that you tried to make someone aware of the gospel call? The blessed call of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the blessed call that comes out from the Spirit as well. If you, it says, let him who hears say come. I think the idea is that the followers of the Lord will also repeat that last call and try to get it out into the world. Are we trying to get that call out to the world the way that we should? Are we compassionate saints are we compassionate Christians for the world, the lost and dying world? See, the last call, I believe, goes out to the lost. And it also goes out to our brothers and sisters in Christ who have walked away. Is the last call going out? You know, there's a lot of ways that we could think about this. But you know why you might get a call? It's because someone cares. You know why somebody might check in? Is because they care. You know why somebody might ask you how you're doing is because they care. Are the last calls going out for individuals that are around us? You know, so many times we're afraid that we are going to offend. But really, taking the last call to the world is an act of love. Are we compassionate, loving saints? Compassionate, loving Christians? You know, I think of Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33 describes a watchman. And we have this watchman, and this watchman is, is overseeing the, the city. It is watching over what is going on. And it gives us a couple different scenarios of the watchman. The watchman who doesn't warn and the watchman who does warn. Ezekiel chapter 33, and certainly it's, a, it's an excellent passage. I'll try to just focus on some of the parts here. Just picking up in verse 5. It says, He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. We have this idea that the watchman blows the horn, but people don't listen. And it says that person who doesn't listen, their blood shall be upon themselves. It says, but he who takes warning will save his life. The person who listens to the last call will actually save their life. Verse 6, it says, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away and his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Now, when we go back to Ezekiel chapter 33, I think it's important to understand the context, but sometimes we really understand pictures very well. I think we understand the picture of the incompetent watchman. The watchman who does not blow the trumpet is guilty in some respects because the individuals are hurt. But the watchman who does his best, the watchman who tries to warn, I believe has a clear conscience. You know, I've tried to fight for that throughout my life. I think it's one of the biggest challenges of a Christian is actually trying to keep our conscience clear in relation to the gospel call. That people in our families, people in our lives, people that we love, people that we care about, people that we work with know that we are willing to study with them, that we are willing to talk with them, that we are willing to discuss any of these things because there is no more important call on this side of death. There's no more important call. There's no more important question. There's no more important issue to try to discuss and try to make sure that we are on the right side of the gospel call. I try to keep my conscience clean. Now, I know just like you, you have challenges just like I do. But I try to keep an open door. Would you like to study the Bible? You know what, they might say no. But I bet that will leave an impression on them that perhaps when they're going through some hard times or they have some questions, maybe I'll be the one that they'll call. And I've had that happen in my life. And some of those actually happened all the way back into my high school days. 
When I became a Christian and I tried to live the Christian life, I had people that I played on sports teams with that saw me in high school, and they started going through something in their life, and they called me up and said, Kyle, I remember you in high school trying to live the life. I remember that you said you'd like to study with me. I think now's the time. Do you have open invitations to those that you love? Do you have those an open invitation to those that are around you? Because the gospel call goes out from Jesus. Certainly it goes out from the Spirit. But I think there's an idea that it is supposed to go out from Christians as well. Has the gospel call went out? Is it ringing out from your life to those that are around? You know, many times people think when it comes to the last call, unfortunately they think that all they have to do is believe. And I would suggest that the Bible does not teach that. I would say that we could look at a couple examples right now where individuals believed, but they were not really answering the last call. I think that we could go to James chapter 2 and verse 19 real quick. It says the demons believe and tremble. But we would all, I think, agree that the demons are not in a relationship with God just because they believe. Just because they believe does not mean they're in a right relationship with God. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Even the demons believe... I also think of John chapter 12 and verse 42. It says that there's individuals that believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but they would not confess him because they love the praise of men. John chapter 12 and verse 42. I believe there's individuals that have not answered the gospel call because they have not obeyed the words of Jesus. You know, there's nothing special about the water per se, but God asks us to do it. Just like there's nothing special about walking around the walls of Jericho, there's nothing special about a lot of things that people did in the Old Testament, but there are things in the Bible that are acts of faith. We hear what God says, and the question is, is will we do it? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Joshua was told to walk around the walls of Jericho. And he followed the instructions of the Lord and the walls fell down. See, a lot of it is actually trusting God. That God will do what he says. If God says that this is what an individual has to do to be added to the church, to become a New Testament Christian, to have their sins washed away, if God says it, I'll do it. Because of faith. Have you answered the last call? The call is to ring out from Jesus the call is to ring out from the Spirit, and the call is to ring out from Christians themselves. Has the call went out? I believe it has. The question is, is will you answer that call? You know, I've preached some places at certain times where I preached, and the next Sunday, certain individuals were not there because they had passed away. The last call is for you this day. The last call is ringing out. Will you answer it before the end of this life? Perhaps you need to become a New Testament Christian. Perhaps you need the prayers of the church. Perhaps you have questions that need answered. We'd love to help you in any way that we can this morning if you come as we stand and as we sing.